In this video, we're going to be looking at variables affecting conformity, and these were investigated by Ash. Notice that this is different from types of conformity and also different from explanations for conformity. So pay really, really close attention whenever you're given a question about conformity. So the variables affecting conformity, here we're looking at situational variables. So we're looking, about, looking at features of the environment, of the situation, of the context that affect the degree to which individuals conform to group pressure. So under what circumstances can we manipulate the environment to make people more or less likely to conform? So Ash performed a number of variations of his baseline procedure, which you will know very, very well, to investigate the impact of these variables and to look at how they might increase or decrease conformity rates. So we're going to be looking at how um, Ash investigated group size, unanimity and task difficulty, and the impacts that these had on the rates of conformity in his participants. So let's start by looking at the impact of the group size variable. So how did Ash investigate this variable? He tested group size by altering the number of confederates. So you'll remember um, in Ash's baseline study, there were sort of five to seven confederates um, that were actors working on behalf of the investigator who were deliberately giving the wrong answers. And then we had our real participant there and we were measuring the rate of conformity in that real participant. So Ash investigated group size by varying the number of confederates that were involved. And therefore, this influenced the size of the majority. So he varied the number of confederates from one confederate. So we just had one confederate acting on behalf of the experimenter and then our real participant. All the way up to 15. I'm not going to draw all 15 stick figures, but you get the idea. So we wanted to see how group size and the size of the majority would affect conformity of our real genuine participant. So, very, very interesting findings. And you can see in this graph here exactly what's happened. This is a, a curvilinear relationship. What we see is that as group size increases, so the number of con uh, confederates increases up to about three or so, we see the rates of conformity also increasing. But then it levels off. And this is a really, really interesting finding. So when there was just one confederate who was giving the wrong answer, conformity was at 3%. When there were two confederates, conformity was at 13%. Three confederates, 32%. Notice that this is the same rate of conformity in Ash's baseline experiment. But when we have 15 confederates, conformity decreases slightly. So it's very, very interesting. I wonder if you can think about what might be happening here. So we'll talk about this in lessons, but I just want to give you some, some thinking time here. So what does this suggest? Well, this suggests that individuals are very sensitive to the views of others. It means that the majority doesn't need to be more than three. Two confederates is enough to sway our opinion. But in saying that as well, at, you know, at the other extreme, we don't need more than three. Three is enough. And any more than that, and actually what we might start seeing is suspicion from the confederate, uh, sorry, from the participant of the confederates. They might start getting a little bit suspicious that they might um, all be in on it together. So by the time we get 15 people saying the very obviously wrong answer, people do start to get a bit suspicious. So group size, important to know how Ash investigated this variable and really important to know the findings here as well. The next variable that Ash investigated was unanimity whether the group was unanimous. So when we're talking about this unanimity variable, we're talking really about the extent to which all of the members of the group agree. The members of the group, the confederates. Were they all in agreement about the, um, about the line that was the most correct to the target line? If the first confederate said A, did all of the others say A as well? So. Ash investigated this in a couple of ways. He introduced a confederate who disagreed with the other confederates. And so if we think back to our baseline study, here we've got our real participant, second to last. And all of the others are confederates working on behalf of Ash. 
In the baseline study, all of these confederates would say the same wrong answer. A, 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 A. And we'd look to see how often our real participant would also say A. In this variation, um, one of the dissenters gave the correct answer. So one of the confederates, for example, this person here, said the correct answer, B. So we wanted to look to see now, in a group that is no longer unanimous, what happens to conformity for our real participant. In another variation, that same dissenter gave a different incorrect answer. So if the correct answer is B, all of our other confederates are saying A, this person is saying C. So they're going against the group majority, but they're saying a different incorrect answer. And what effect is this going to then have on our participant? They found that when there was no longer unanimity in the group, conformity rates decline. When the group is no longer unanimous, conformity drops. So in another way that we can phrase this is that when there is the presence of a dissenter or the presence of a non-conforming individual, then conformity drops. So let me just show you what this looks like uh, in a bit, bit of a better drawing there rather than my stick figures. So in the first unanimity variation that Ash conducted, the dissenter gave the correct answer. And in that case, conformity dropped from 32% in his baseline study to 5.5%. When this happens, when our um, dissenting confederate gives the correct answer, this gives our participant the confidence to reject the majority, so they can behave more independently. We've heard somebody say the correct answer. Ah, oh, OK, maybe I can too. And so that can explain conformity in Ash's first variation on unanimity. In the second variation, this is where our dissenter or our dissenting confederate gave a different incorrect answer. Interestingly, conformity still dropped. It didn't drop as much as when our dissenter gave the correct answer, but it still dropped to 9%. This is very, very interesting. This suggests to us that actually what's happening here is not necessarily that the dissenting confederate is giving us useful information, but they're giving us the confidence um, to, to answer independently because they're breaking uh, the unanimity of the group and because they're providing us with some sort of social support or some sort of solidarity, that it's okay to break against the group. It's okay to push back and, and to not conform, even if they're giving another incorrect answer. So it suggests the key in reduction in majority agreement rather than naive participant being given correct support. We're going to come back to these later on when we look at resistance to social influence. These studies, ooh, my pen's gone a bit funny there. These studies are going to be crucial. Okay, the third and final variable that Ash investigated was task difficulty. So he wanted to see what influence this would have on conformity. He did this by making the stimulus line and the comparison lines much closer in length. You'll see here that there's actually not much difference between the lengths of each of these lines. So this means that it's harder then for our participant to accurately judge the correct line. And what did Ash find? Well, Ash found that conformity increases when task difficulty increases. When people are less certain about the correct answer, they're more likely to look to the group for guidance. And this, remember, can be best explained by informational social influence. when we look to the group in order to be right. The more ambiguous the task, the more uncertain we are with the right answer, the more likely individuals are to look to others for guidance, assuming that the group um, has got access to the correct information, assuming that the group is right. Now, a, just a word of, of warning here. Proceed very, very carefully with any questions into conformity. You need to be very, very aware of the difference between questions that ask you to explain how Ash investigated variables affecting conformity and explain how variables investigated by Ash were found to affect conformity. If you're asked to explain how Ash investigated these variables, you're being asked to describe the procedure. For example, task difficulty, he made the lines closer together in length. 
If you're asked to explain how the variables investigated by Ash were found to affect conformity, here we need to focus on the findings. My suggestion would be to do lots and lots of practice questions here to make sure that you're able to pick up on this subtle change to the wording. 